some residents are still feeling the thermal effects of the intrusion. Uh, as the dike is trying to cool, the heat is moving into the surrounding ground. So this is one resident's property. It's a breadfruit tree right here. Um, that was the first crack on this particular resident's property, and it was also the first steaming area. We thought this was actually going to erupt at one point um, because it had a blue tint to it, which means there's sulfur mixed into that, sulfur dioxide mixed into that. Uh, but it never erupted. However, a year later, all this is the same breadfruit tree. All of her vegetation has essentially been boiled and dissolved away by the groundwater that is so hot from this intrusion. Um, so you can see it, it, it used to be a very nice lush green field, and, and by the time we took this picture, parts of it had died. Um, but now the, the plant literally just fell on the ground as their roots boiled, and then they dissolved themselves. And it leaves this little white crust behind on the rock. So those residents are in all of Ely, and they've been feeling this for the better part of a year and a half now. Um, this started for them during the eruption. They saw it progress through the eruption, and it's just been getting worse after the eruption. Um, but recently, Holly Kamahina residents have called us and said they started noticing some similar effects that we recognized from all of Ely um, this fall, so for the last five or six months. Uh, and then Leilani Estates called in December and said, hey, folks next to Fishers 9 and 10 are noticing the temperatures on their property are rising. Is everything OK? And uh, the unfortunate answer is yes, everything is OK. But here's what's happening. Um, well, here's the areas that are affected. This is the Ala Ely area. This is the Leilani Estates area that was recently affected. And this is the Holly Kamakina area. So, in our geologic cartoon, we have a dike that's coming up to the surface. It doesn't break the surface in this cartoon. It's just an intrusion um, to help conceptually with the process. Uh, thermally, right above the intrusion is very hot, magnetic temperature hot, uh, hot steam coming out of this crack. We're, we're talking anywhere from 2 to 500 Celsius. So very hot, high, much higher above the boiling temperature um, than, than anyone would want to approach. But just a few yards away, you know, 20, 30 yards away, the ground feels normal, feels cool. Uh, it doesn't feel hot at all. It's just these cracks that are really hot. But fast forward, whatever time frame you want, six months, a year, the, this heat will slowly start leaching into the ground rock, and <coughs> this spot will cool down, but these spots will warm up. And so this has basically cooled to the boiling point. It seems to be buffered there. Uh, we haven't seen the temperatures change on these properties above or below the boiling point too much. Um, but now that 20 yards away that used to be cool also has steaming water and is just shy of the boiling point. And that's because the heat from the dike is slowly migrating outwards into the ground as this tries to solidify and crystallize. But unfortunately, that means that farther areas away that you thought wouldn't be impacted at all by the heat are now starting to warm up. And so a lot of residents in these affected areas are asking themselves, well, is there anything we can do? Uh, you know, how, what should we do? Um, unfortunately, our best guidance is the 1955 eruption, where there were steam vents that were still warm and spa attraction as recently as 2017, 2018. So um, it can stay hot for several decades. Uh, and that's uh, just how the heat is trying to leave the dike so that it can solidify fully. 